Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, let me say, um, as people know here online, I've been critical in the past on Chris Algieri. Right? I've made the argument that Ruslan Provotnikov, in having a title, knocking Algeria down twice, not getting knocked down himself, uh, shouldn't have lost his title in that match. Right? Also, I predicted Manny Pacquiao would beat Chris Algeri when the two of them fought. And people here online know I've been critical of Manny Pacquiao. Now, let me say I'd like to see the birth certificate on the guy who showed up claiming to be Chris Algieri for his fight against Amir Khan because in my opinion this guy was bigger this guy hit harder this guy was adept adept on his front foot this guy was doing some high level stuff defensively I mean high level this guy had a sense of timing, right? Let me say this to Chris Algieri. You know, first, he needs to just embrace the weight gain. Before this fight, he had never fought at 147 pounds before. He looks damn good at 147 pounds, right? My advice to him is gain the weight. Let your body thrive. Right? Bernard Hopkins looked a little dead at the end of his middleweight run. Right? By the way, they're trimming the hedges outside. This happens. What can I say? I apologize. But let me say this. Bernard Hopkins looked a little dead at the end of his middleweight run. Then I was watching a fight between him and light heavyweight champion Antonio Tarver. And I got to tell you, Hopkins didn't look that good. Hadn't looked that good in years. It was clear that his body was thanking him for the extra calories. Some guys gain weight naturally get better, get more pop on their punches. I thought that was Chris Algieri. This was the best by a wide margin that I've ever seen Chris Algieri. The best. It was surprising. I was looking at this fight, and I was thinking, you've got to be kidding me. You know, Algieri came in with a slightly different haircut. I was thinking, wow, is this Chris Algieri? Let me say, I thought he looked great. Let me also say this, too. You know, sometimes you meet up with people. You might not even get along with them personally. But then you notice that good things start happening. Right? For whatever reason, whether you believe in the advice you're getting or not, right? For whatever reason, things just start to work out. Life becomes easier. Now, you know, I don't know if John David Jackson and Chris Algieri are, you know, close friends or whether they just met or what have you. I can tell you this is an inspired peering. Right? This is like Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. I mean, I, you know, I predicted Amir Khan would win this fight. Um, I didn't see the fight live. Um, I heard about the unanimous decision. Right? And I said, okay, interesting. I was on Twitter while the fight was happening, and I was looking at some of the comments on the fight. Right? A lot of people felt that Amir Khan... Uh, did well, particularly in the second half of the fight, right? Afterwards, I read a few articles. I was hearing that Khan passed his audition and stuff like that. It wasn't until later that I sat down and watched the fight. Let me just say this. Um, John David Jackson and Algieri are magic together. Um, I was watching the fight. I was absolutely astonished. After six rounds... I had the fight three rounds to three rounds. After ten rounds, 
I had the fight five rounds to five rounds. Then we get to the eleventh round, right? Algieri comes out. He's moving his upper body. He's bending at the waist. He's coming forward. He lands some really good right hands. I didn't see anything big in response from Amir Khan. I gave Chris Algieri the 11th round. We get to the 12th round. I thought Algieri came out and closed the show. Right? Um, I thought Algieri just looked more active, just looked better. Now I know this is not this is not what you're reading, this is not what you're hearing. Understand this is just again a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Uh, on my scorecard I had Chris Algieri winning this fight seven rounds to five. Right? I you know, I don't know what can be said. Um in handicapping future fights, I just have to say that I'm going to, um, you know, really consider this a win for Algeri, right? I'm, you know, I'll say this, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to return the money the casino gave me on the Amir Khan bet. But I will say this, I thought Khan would win the fight and I was wrong. Right? Um, Khan won the fight, I'm sure, on many scorecards. He didn't win it on my scorecard. This is not the way I thought the fight would go. I thought Algieri would be more aggressive, as I said in a pre-fight video, because he was with, Don, with John David Jackson. I have no idea, and I mean none, how Chris Algieri could look so vastly different than any prior incarnation of him. I'd love to see this Chris Algieri against Manny Pacquiao. I don't know how that fight would go the same way. Let's talk about what Chris Algieri did. And let me say this, you know, for me at least, it's a learning experience as I go along. Right now, before this fight, I had a saying. I still have a saying. How do you beat an ambush fighter? you follow him after the ambush. Now understand, Chris Algieri has great legs. I base that conclusion on seeing him back up well against people like Richland Provodnikov. Out hustle, guys. Right? Well, to make a long story short, Chris Algieri in this fight actually does something interesting. He doesn't follow Amir Khan after the ambush. Folks, he's following Amir Khan before the ambush. It's startling. It's stunning. Right? Khan, to me, looks bad. He wins the first round. The first round I have is an Amir Khan round. But Khan's taken out of his comfort zone. The Khan attributes that I thought would make him a very tough opponent, I still think he's a tough opponent style-wise for Floyd Mayweather. His ability to shoot a jab, flush you out of the pocket, hit you with hand speed. Well, Chris Algieri took a lot of that away from him because Chris Algieri forced Khan on his back foot. Where Amir Khan, dare I say, isn't Amir Khan, right? Let me say too defensively, Algieri's coming forward, he's swiveling from his waist. Right? It's a swivel. You'll notice his upper body is here, then it's here, then it's here. He's swiveling. Then he starts doing real advanced stuff where he's putting stuff on a plane. And by that I mean he comes in, he knows Khan well enough to know when Khan is going to try to throw a left hook. A few catch him during the fight. But what Algieri does is he literally makes his head parallel to his shoulder right he doesn't put a hand up he's keeping his hands free in other words his aggression is still ongoing right he doesn't tie up a hand what he does instead is get his body between himself and the punch and he's doing this against one of the fastest 
left-handed guys. One of the quickest guys in the sport of boxing. I thought at times he's manhandling Amir Khan. Khan tries to open up, gets hit with punches. Can't quite open up. There are times where Algeri has his head down. It's kind of like a, uh, a Jorge Arce under control. There are times where um, Algeri has his head down, gets his punches inside of Amir Khan's punches, and hits Khan, throwing Khan off of a combination. That was just a tribute to Khan's hand speed and talent. That Khan, in my opinion, over the first 10 rounds is able to get a tie. I know this is not the popular paradigm. Okay, I'll accept that. I'm just telling you my scorecard. Right? Amir Khan has moments where as he's getting out hustled, as he is flush from the pocket and trying to dance around, Right? He has moments where he comes in with that left hand, for example, and is able to hit Algeri flush, standing Algeri up. Right? Khan has enough of those moments, as well as moments where he lets his hands go and then moves away. Where he's able to offset what Chris Algeri is doing. As I said, I had it three rounds to three rounds. I had it five rounds to five rounds. But Khan, in my opinion, and it's the opposite of what's being said, it's the opposite of what I saw on Twitter. Khan, in my opinion, couldn't sustain that in rounds 11 and rounds 12. Now, let me say this. Boxing's an expectation game. It really is. If you go back and if you look at some of the historical fights. They're going to look different today than they did at the time. Right? I'm telling you, Felix Trinidad against Oscar De La Hoya, right? At the time, you know, people thought Felix Trinidad won the fight. As they were announcing the scores, you were thinking, who won the fight? Right? Trinidad had gone 12 rounds with De La Hoya. Who was Boxing's cash cow at the time. If you watch that fight today, it looks like De La Hoya is teaching class. Right? De La Hoya just has the vastly superior footwork. De La Hoya looks like he's looking at Trinidad's front knee. He knows when Trinidad's going to come forward. He always has Trinidad resetting. The fight wasn't as close as we thought it was. Right? I'll give you another example. Go back and look at the rematch of Roberto Duran with an upset stomach against Ray Leonard. Right? Now, I'll agree. Ray's doing a lot better than he did in the first fight. No question about it. Ray is flashy. Ray does the bolo punch, then hits him with the other hand. Right? All of that is true. Right? I'm telling you, Roberto Duran is holding his own in that fight. Right? If Duran had his head on him that night, he would have realized he could have come back and won that fight. Right? Ray's not hurting Duran. Ray is doing a lot of slick stuff. Duran's not busted up. Duran, that fight's closer than we want to believe. Now, my point is this. Everyone viewed this fight as an audition by Amir Khan. An audition by Amir Khan for Floyd Mayweather. Right? Khan was the heavy favorite on the Vegas odds going into the fight. No question about it. Right? If Chris Algieri were the big favorite going into this fight, if Chris Algieri was the title holder, if he was auditioning for Floyd Mayweather going into this fight, right? If he had just had a high-profile fight against Devin Alexander, etc., I don't believe the scorecards on the identical fight would be what they were. In fact, if these guys fought next week, now that we've seen really 
the new Chris Algieri on his front foot. Right? If we were more familiar with this style, if we were to head into round one saying, how is Khan going to handle Algieri on his front foot? If we knew that Algieri was adept on his front foot before this fight, and they were to fight the identical fight, I'm telling you the scoring would be vastly different. I can't explain the judges who had it 117-111. I can't. That's not the fight I watched. Right? My point to you is if you haven't seen the fight, before you reach conclusions on the fight, before you rush to the casino to bet on Algeria's next fight or Amir Khan's next fight, please actually look at the fight film. Right? Don't go by anybody's second opinion. Don't go by my second opinion. I don't want you to. Right? What I want you to do is to look at the film. Just ask yourself, over 12 rounds, why is it that Amir Khan couldn't get Chris Algieri to back up? Ask yourself, when they get inside, who's better inside? In fact, let me say this to Chris Algieri. If Algieri would have thought about combinations to Khan's body earlier in this fight, I believe on the judges' scorecards he would have won more rounds. Right? Algieri looks better inside than Amir Khan. Right? Just, just ask yourself. I know Algeria gets a little bit dinged up early by the eye, right? How come Khan wasn't able to capitalize on that? How come Algeria is so vigorous in the 12th round? How come he wasn't slowed down? How come Khan, on a guy coming forward on him all night, couldn't dig some hard shots to Algeria's body? Right? It, it seemed to me that Khan didn't look like Khan. This wasn't prime Khan. This wasn't even plan B, Amir Khan. Now let's talk Khan Mayweather. Understand this fight, in a sense, is an optical illusion because both Algeria and Khan have great legs. Right? Algeria has great legs. Let me say this, too, about Algeria. Algeria didn't seem able to cut off the ring on Amir Khan. Right? Khan's lucky he has such great legs. Right? Algeria's trying. Khan's able to circle him. Right? If I'm Chris Algeria, I would have to think about ways to cut off the ring a little bit better. Right? What he might want to do, too, is make it look like Khan's running. You know, run to a spot where he knows Khan's going to be. Then as Khan tries to scamper away, motion to him, let the judges know, let the crowd know, hey, look, this guy is running a bit. Right? But just understand, it's Amir Khan who's trying to avoid danger. Not Chris Algieri. Chris Algieri is daring him to fight him. And offensively blessed, Amir Khan doesn't accept that challenge. Right? He's on his back foot moving out of the pocket. Now, in recent fights, I haven't seen Floyd Mayweather move forward that much. I haven't seen Floyd Mayweather move forward as much as Chris Algieri moves forward in this fight for quite some time. Mayweather's on his back foot against Manny Pacquiao. Right? Mayweather does move forward. On Canelo Alvarez, Mayweather knows how to move forward. The um, uh, Mitchell fight from a few years ago, Mayweather's moving forward. Mayweather moves forward on Diego Corrales. I consider Mayweather to be a switch. But Mayweather's now in his later 30s. And guys keep coming to him. Right? So Mayweather really, Robert Ghost Guerrero, was able to move back in that fight. Right? Marcos Maidana Mayweather was able to move back in that fight. He didn't have to go hunting 
like Chris Algieri went hunting here. Now I'll agree, Amir Khan will look better against a guy who isn't hunting him down like Chris Algieri hunted him down. But I don't know, and it's one man's opinion, how a fighter can be hunted like this, not score any knockdowns in the fight, get hit with the right hands Amir Khan gets hit with the times in this fight, and somehow get a 117-111 scorecard. He gets it twice. Right? I would have been okay if they called the fight a draw. I would have been okay if they awarded the fight to Amir Khan and it was a 7-5 fight. Seven rounds to five rounds. Right? I don't know how you get these scorecards. Apart from the expectation game. Us expecting Khan to dominate. Right? People putting early rounds especially in the con category that he didn't earn. Right? So, let me just say, if you haven't seen this, you need to. Algeri seems to have been weight draining himself. He's a natural at 147. He looks like he might even be more dangerous at 154. I'm watching the British telecast, and at the end of the fight, they thought Khan won the fight. But at the end of the fight, the guy actually says on the air, who would have known that Chris Algieri would be the puncher in this fight? Think about it. Right? Algieri looks like he's the one who landed the bigger shots in the match. So what does that leave you with? Khan's foot speed? Khan's hand speed? Did you feel Khan was able to open up on Chris Algieri with several Chris combinations? I didn't see that. I thought Algieri gave as good as he got. As I said, after 6, I had it 3-3. After 10, I had it 5-5. I thought, okay, these are the championship rounds where Khan's supposed to have pulled away. Let me see if that happens. That was missing from my fight film, folks. I thought Algieri won this fight 7-5. I know, I know as I make this video, 80% of you are going to disagree with me strongly. I'll take my lumps. I always, I always do. Keep in mind, you know, this is from someone who picked Khan in the fight, right? No sour grapes on my part. This is an undeserved reward because, in my opinion, Khan didn't win this fight, right? Khan on his back foot isn't Khan on his front foot. Right, this Samir Khan didn't look like the Khan who fought Devin Alexander. Right, this Samir Khan looked like all he could do was tie up Algieri when he came inside. Khan was channeling Vladimir Klitschko. He, he tucks Algieri's head under his, you know, underarm at times. But unlike Vladimir Klitschko, Khan wasn't doling out the big punches. Right, I didn't see him as the power puncher in this fight. Right? Unlike Vladimir Klitschko, Khan wasn't landing his jab with regularity. I thought he was being out-hustled and out-boxed. I hope Algeri stays with John David Jackson. Understand, this is these guys' first time together. Right? This is the beginning, folks. This could get a lot better, especially if. Algeria is in against a slower-footed guy who he could cut the ring off on. Then we might have seen Algeria get inside. The few times these guys get inside, I thought Algeria had the decided advantage. Those are my thoughts on this fight. Let me hear yours. I think 147 just got a hell of a lot more interesting. I enjoy seeing a fight between, let's see, let's say Algeria and a Sean Porter right um, understand too Algeria's a switch he was on his front foot this fight until now we've seen him operate on his back foot in other words Algeria can come forward he can go backward right don't assume that if he's fighting a different opponent in the future if he's fighting Adrian Broner don't assume that he's going to be lingering around the pocket. For a fighter like Broner, he might realize that the fight that Timothy Bradley fought against one Manuel Marquez, 
might be the way to go. Anyway, um, I had Algeri winning this fight, 7-5. I say that as someone who picked Khan in the fight. Let me hear from you. Tell me what I'm missing. If you have a tape of the fight, if you disagree with me in rounds 11 and 12, because the Twitter sphere seems to, then tell me exactly what moments in the 11th and 12th convinced you that Amir Khan won those rounds. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.